So greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking, and I am Dale Barzi. And as always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think. So here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world and at any stage in their nursing journey, from students to retirees and anybody in between. And today I am very, very pleased to welcome Sansare Clark. And Sansare is a nurse of 23 years, and she's had more than 18 years of nursing leadership experience, particularly in critical care and trauma. And she has developed, she is a soul, soul solution son coacher. Is that correct? Coach, not coacher. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to so let Sonsuri tell you about her. <laughs> it's called, uh, it's so funny because I just changed the name this past month. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be called Solutional Son. Uh -huh. um, and I have been doing a lot of soul searching. And I changed the name just this last month to Soul like your uh -huh. soul, yes. solutional son coaching. I'm a soul recovery coach. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to let you tell us about that. But firstly, I usually really want to know why people are nurses, because for me, the why is big. Mm -hmm. So why are you a nurse? So I'm going to make a, a, a long story into a short story. Um. So for me, I knew that I was going to go into healthcare at a very young age. Okay. Um, I had a pediatrician with, um, when I was about around the age of, I want to say between seven and 10. Um, and she was a woman of color. And I remember every time I went to go see her, um, how I said, wow, you know, she's in healthcare and she looks like me. Mm -hmm. um, and she passed away okay. and I said to myself that that was one of my first losses in life mm -hmm. um, and I said I vow to be in healthcare. I vow to be in healthcare to honor and I never forget her name her name was Dr. Shepard um, and she worked in the inner city I'm from the Bronx um, and just to see a woman of color and a physician is what made me go into healthcare. That 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 is awesome. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that and that's the thing. We very often don't know how many people we influence mm -hmm. by the things we do. We very often don't know. So, what were some of the challenges you faced in becoming a nurse? In becoming a nurse, or while being a nurse, <laughs> either or both. <laughs> um, because nursing, think, comes, nursing comes with challenges yes so vividly um so one of the challenges that that really stick out to mind in becoming a nurse um and and, and i'm going to be very uh transparent here um is was the um how do i say it um inequality in nursing school mm-hmm Mm -hmm. that I experienced. Um, I had things said to me, um, like I, I remember vividly walking into a classroom and granted I was late, but I had family issues, you know, at home and the professor called me out in front of everybody. And I said, you know, with all due respect, doctor, whomever it was at the time, I said, you know, I had to get my mom to the doctor. Um, and, you know, this is not high school. I pay to be here. This is college. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and I remember her stating to me, well, couldn't you have sent her in a taxi? Okay. And that stuck with me for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, just the ill regard um, mm -hmm. of some of the professors um, yeah. with students of color in the nursing mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being mm -hmm. blatantly told that I would not pass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. was some of the challenges in um in becoming a nurse and also dealing with my own emotional traumas, you know. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. and you know, I dealt with abandonment, not feeling good enough um in my own personal life. So to be in a program um where the 
the what professors were predominantly, I, I, I don't think I have one woman of color as yeah. a professor. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just, just feeling like you always had to go the extra mile. You always had, it was a lot of stress upon the educational stress. Of yes, I know. Up. yes, I know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. And even then someone looks right past you. Yes. 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 I get that. So, so, so what areas have you worked in? So, so funny. I, I want to get into that maybe at the end, but my predominant okay, sure. area um, of nursing has been trauma, critical care, like I said, and mm -hmm. I've been in nursing leadership um, for about 18 years out of my 23, going on 24 years of my nursing career. Yes. Yes. So, <clears throat> so other, other than, um, well, what, what would you say, what aspects then of nursing life, what would you like to see change? If anything, what would you like to see change? Because, you know, right now we uh -huh. have nurses on strike. Yes. We have nurses who are complaining every day that they're going to work with not knowing if they're going to have any support, any staff to work with, mm -hmm. any respect, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I'm coming across so many nurses who are feeling burnt out, left behind, disregarded, you know, who are understanding. I remember uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm not going to be ashamed to say this, but at the beginning of the pandemic, when everybody was walking around calling nurses heroes, and I remember saying to my husband, give it six weeks and that's going to change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it took a little longer than six weeks, mm -hmm. but our experiences led us to understand that that was lip service. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to see change? How? So that, that's a that's a two-edged sword that we're dealing with here, right? Because you have to think, I am a nurse. I am mm -hmm. always going to be a nurse. Yes. Um, I will be at the bedside. However, I went into leadership, right? Yeah. So that's a very, you have a double mind when you look at it, right? So for me, what I would like to see change is that I would like for nursing schools to really paint the picture of what nursing really is. Really. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Not that they can't glamorize nursing um, and, and have this perception of, and, and I'm going to be very frank, there are some nurses, younger nurses that are going into the profession for glamour, for monetary um, mon you know, a monetary uh, yeah. okay. reward, which doesn't even equate to the amount of work that is being done. So then now you have resentment yeah. towards mm -hmm. the profession because you think, oh, it's going to be glamorous. I'm going to wear a stethoscope and I'm going to wear pretty scrubs and I'm going to get in here. So for me, I think that we need to teach our nurses emotional intelligence when it comes to the profession. Mm -hmm. um, and really letting them know what it is, a, what it is about. Mm -hmm. And then the second component to that is we need more nurses to go into the operational as they, you know, complete their clinical yes. uh, yes. experience. They need to move more into senior leadership roles because yes. then they would have the skill set to really see what is needed. And they've been on the battlefield. Yeah. So we yeah. need nurses to turn into the CEOs and the COOs yes. and the CFOs. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I went back to school to get my MBA um, was to really go more in an operational, uh, you know, manner yes. so yes. that I reach back um, and, and, and really help the operations side of uh, healthcare. Yeah understand yeah. yeah but also bridge the gap because yeah. i think that some of the nurses and i would say the newer nurses they have a false reality of what they're getting into mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can I can see that. I can see that. Mm -hmm. And and that's that I, I am so glad you talked about going back and getting your MBA because that's one of the things that I see and that makes me gives me some hope actually that more and more nurses are seeking higher and higher education, which mm -hmm. allows us to stand in places where traditionally we did not stand. Absolutely. And allows us to make the decisions that affect us. Because we have to have a seat at that table, Dale. Yes, yes. <laughs> too many of those decisions are made by people who have no clue. No clue at all. No clue. About who we are, what we do, what we bring to the table. So. Absolutely. That gives me hope. <laughs> so that is, um, it's so funny that you bring that up, but I know we may get into it a little further. I started my coaching business um at the height of the pandemic because i saw the burnout and i also saw um the ptsd um and the traumatic effects that the pandemic had on our profession um and with my coaching um it you know i do soul recovery and with soul recovery i primarily work on um really tapping into emotional intelligence, finding your identity and really abolishing imposter syndrome because a lot of us um, deal with that and mm -hmm. that's what keeps us stuck and mm -hmm. we don't move into those roles mm -hmm. because we don't feel that we belong, we belong. or we yes. don't feel that we are worthy. Yes, yes. So exactly. that was the whole premise exactly. of me starting my coaching business yes exactly exactly this this imposter syndrome thing has got us by the throat by the throat um, and you know really we need to do something to loosen that grip mm -hmm. yeah because nurses you know i i i see nurses that we work hard not only do we work Ooh. hard and when i say we work hard i mean you know, people visualize the actual physical hard work that we do and that exists. But other than that, it takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot, you, you know, it takes a lot of mental, physical, emotional. Mental. It, takes your, it takes your whole body, it takes your whole of you. Um, yes. And then, you know, we are, are conditioned, if the word is right, A, because mostly we're still women and Secondly, we're nurses, and both of those things kind of condition us to put everybody first. Say um, it again, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> so we end up... It gives us to... like the martyr syndrome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it spills over. Oh my God, this ties so well into my coaching. And, you know, it spills over into the home. And then what we do is we develop um, mm. mommy guilt, a lot of mommy guilt or wife guilt. Yes. Um, and we all know what guilt does to us. Yes. And that is one of the areas that can erode your soul. And that's why I, I, you know, my premise is to recover your soul, mind, body, and spirit yes. so that you can remove chaos from your life and make better decisions for yourself, better decisions in your home, better decisions in your work life, better decisions in choosing who you want to be in your life, or if you even want to be in that field yeah, or that specialty, because we have yes. a hard time of letting go. Yes, yes, yes. This, this, you know, talk. Just, just let's just get into your coaching thing and be <laughs> done with it. And be done with it because this is where we are. Because you talk so much about not letting go um, from where you are, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, so I found this little niche. I'm not even comfortable here, but I, I, I know this. And if I let go, where will I go? What will I do? First of all, mm -hmm. nursing, if you wanted to be a nursing, is so huge. You can do anything. You can do anything. Do anything. You can do anything. Um, and we've got to let go of this feeling. Again, you talked about not feeling good enough. And we do it, we do it to ourselves and we do it to our colleagues. Yes. We do but it to Dale, I'm gonna be a hundred percent transparent with you. 
um, we have to know where we have to know where our soul is because although we come to work right and we put this pressure on ourselves and then we do it to our colleagues, but where is that coming from? Yeah, it's coming from our who we are, right? Like. It comes with all the baggage that we personally yes. have. Yes. So if we if we're dealing with childhood traumas, like for example, for me, I dealt with abandonment um, issues and not feeling good enough. So if that is the center of your being, right, you're gonna be triggered yeah. into responding to that way when something in the workplace makes you feel unworthy. Yes, you are going to yes. respond or react in a negative way emotionally. Yeah. And like you said, it takes your whole being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what mm -hmm. nurses need to understand. You, you, you come to work, you have to be a hundred percent mind, body, and spirit because something is going to erode. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Something is going to erode. And you know, that's one of the reasons why, I always start asking people why. Yes. That's one you of need the reasons. To know the why. Why. You need to know why. And if you hadn't thought about it before, I really want to think about why. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know why you're in a I'm sorry, you're in a bad way. It's not you, you can't survive. It's not gonna it's not gonna work for you. No. And that's anything in life, right? So that's pretty much anything in life. That's pretty much anything in life. Mm -hmm. But I find especially this because so many times it's at so many times during a particular day, you know, a particular shift, mm -hmm. you can get battered. Um, and all of it is not even bad battering, you know, all of it. Some of sometimes it is just, um, you know, your, your own empathy for what is happening to a particular person. Um, so, you know, all of those things sometimes. And, you know, if you if you're not grounded in that why. Um, it really uh, can take a really bad toll. Yeah, a really, really bad toll. Absolutely. And if you're um, an emotionally unstable person, meaning just personally, you know, yeah. you have people coming to work, and you, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest with you. They're battling addiction. They're battling mm -hmm. abuse in the home. They're mm -hmm. battling so many things. And then they have to show up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I briefly, I saw a statistic the other day, and I don't even know if I want to call it a statistic because it really didn't have any, um, any background, any foundation to it. And I have not actually researched this to see the truth of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just something that I came across. Uh, and it had, they were talking about suicide. Oh. Um, and alcoholism. Yes. And it talked about 70% of the female alcoholics, 70% female alcoholics are nurses. Now, I don't know if that's true. I'm not even going to quote it as being true, but it rocked me. Not that 70% of nurses are alcoholics, but that 70% of female alcoholics are nurses. And that really rocked me. I, I don't see I, that. I, I, I could <laughs> I could I could see it, but I, I really would love to know whether or not it's true because it means we have a whole lot more work to do. To and, it's, and it's it's tied to our soul and collectively. Recovery. Yes. Yes. And if um, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I'm I'm not gonna I wouldn't label myself as have been been an alcoholic but I had a poor relationship with alcohol until mm -hmm. I recovered my soul. And I'm mm -hmm. a nurse. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, know I know what you I know exactly. Yes. I know exactly. Yeah. And I made poor choices in life. Like, you know, yes. I stayed in a trauma bonded marriage mm -hmm. for over mm -hmm. 15 years. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, so there's a lot behind, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, research needs to be done. Like, yeah, we say why we want to go into nursing, but emotionally we need to find out why we're going in because wh why do we want to be the savior? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then when things don't go right, if we're not emotionally centered, it can really cause wreak havoc in your whole life. 
Exactly, exactly. You see, I, I started to laugh just now and I had to start because you asked the question, why do we need to be the savior? Mm. And it just it, it it triggered a memory um in my mind. One of my daughters was uh I, I'm not even sure what was happening, to tell you the truth. Uh -huh. But she called, she said to me, you know, you don't have to be solution, Sally. Ooh. And I said, <laughs> Oh. And that that stopped me in my tracks. It really <laughs> stopped me. <laughs> yes, and you know, that's and then a little she... bit of the control. Exactly, 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 mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, and so and so, you know, it's like, oh, oh what I did I do I act like I have to solve everybody's problems? I had uh -huh. to take a look at me. Yes, I had to take a look at me. So when you said that, that that's what made me laugh because I thought, that, yeah. But you know, we and do that, do that. And that's my that's my purpose. Like that is what I really, I mean, that is what I want to help. And not just nurses, because I, I want to help women. Um, but predominantly, obviously, I'm a nurse by profession. And you know, yeah. I, I work with um healthcare professionals, um, but I want to work with all women, um, women that you know are even in uh corporate America because we deal with the same type of stress, right? not feeling good enough, um, not dealing with our childhood traumas, having this like um, imposter syndrome um, mm -hmm. and just dealing with mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and trying to maintain a career. And so now that, that <clears throat> brings a question to my mind right now, mm -hmm. because um, you, you are focused on women and that's, that's fine. Um, but we have a lot of, we have now more and more men coming into a profession that is predominantly, it's female dominant. Female dominant, yes. So do you think that they're experiencing the same imposter syndrome? No. I'm not going to say an absolute no. I think that male nurses, um, because of, the way we are designed emotionally, um, you know, male nurses excel and they make it to the top very quickly, a lot of them. Why and I don't that? think that they struggle with the imposter syndrome because of um, how they process things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because for them, they're going to, you know, a lot of them will come in and see black and white and they already know I want to make it to the top. I want to, I want to be the, you know, I want to be the chief nursing officer in five years and this is what I have to do. They don't allow the emotional component mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. women struggle with. Mm -hmm. It's just our makeup. Right. And I call our emotional makeup. That's our soul. That's how that's we do soul. life. That um, is how we do life. You know, and a lot of men also, if they are nurses, um, they probably say, you know what, they may have their their wives stay home with the kids and they're working overtime and overtime and working this time and really get moving their careers. Um, so I think they have a different experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. That's just my view. I could see that. I could see that. You should speak to some male nurses and see. I sp I've, I've spoken to a couple. I've spoken to a couple. Uh, their experience definitely is different than yes. ours. Their experience definitely is different than ours. Um, and, 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 you, and know, you know, they have that breadwinner mentality. Yes. So yes. they, and, you and know, that it's in any DNA means necessary for them. They probably mm -hmm. don't even get attached as much as we do when we come to work, you know, like it's just, you yeah. know, they come to work and they're out of there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we put on, um, you know, nurturing, like we put on our clothes. Ooh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And take it home with us and bring it oh. back and mull yeah. over it. And why did this, and what were they really, what did this person mean? And yeah. <laughs> Yep, indeed. When indeed. they walk out the door, they probably just walk out the door and they don't even care. I worked with a lot of male nurses. Uh, I was fortunate enough when I first, you know, so for me, when I started at the bedside, 
you know, I went into management and I left management. Um, and I was traumatized, to be honest with you. And I said, I vowed never to go back into um, management leadership, sorry. Um, because when I first became a nurse manager, um, I had a physician who, um, I want to say it was almost like a whistleblower uh, situation where I knew I had to do the right thing. A patient, uh, it was a patient safety issue, a patient died. Um, and I went up the chain of command. And after that, I was targeted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be frank, the good old boys club, they came after me. And I really didn't have support. And I was a new nursing leader. So my chief nursing officer really couldn't help me. Like, you know, I would get berated in open forum meetings. Mm -hmm. Um. And just, so I left and I left traumatized and I had to heal from that. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, and I found, you know, I came back to the bedside and there was a woman that, um, she saw something in me. She saw the leadership in me and she mentored me and she mended me back. And I'm so grateful for that because I could have lost out on many opportunities. Yeah. yeah. If I didn't overcome that trauma. Yeah, yeah. Earlier you mentioned PTSD. Yes. And not, it, I don't think we recognize it enough or acknowledge it enough, but there's a lot of it um, in this profession. There's a lot of, of, of yes, there's a lot of it. And, and, and a lot of us are acting from that place of trauma, mm -hmm. um, which nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but which in many cases is just kind of glossed over and 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 not recognized and says, well, you know, uh, put your big girl panties on. Uh -huh. And you know, um, and, and that doesn't really work. You know, no. that, that that's a band-aid that will not stay on. So and then and then that and that's what leads to, you know, the drinking probably, and then we don't really know what our home lives are like. Um, and we're drinking just to cope, um, you know, and then at that point, you know, it, it affects our souls because yes, that we, we lose ourselves in the yes. process. Yes, 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 yes. And you, you become a robot it. and you're just getting up, going to work, coming home. Repeat. You're not feeling anything. You're not processing anything to make better, healthier decisions for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you try not to feel anything. Correct. You make a, a deliberate effort a not to feel anything. A deliberate decision not to feel. Yeah, I see that. I know that. I know that. So we talked all about all of this. Um, but there are some really good nurses out there. And Oh, there are great nurses out there. There are great nurses out there, yes. Uh, and, and otherwise I wouldn't be talking to them. So <laughs> But there are great nurses out there. And I, I, I've been asking this question because I realized that I can um, recognize a nurse mm -hmm. without ever being told that this person is a nurse. I know. And so I wanted <laughs> to know, what, what is it I'm actually recognizing? And what if so, what do people see in me? And uh -huh. so I've started asking the question, what would you say in one word, if you could describe the most essential quality of a nurse, what would that word be? The essential quality of a nurse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The most essential or most recognizable quality the of a nurse. The most recognizable. Mm -hmm. hmm. There's so many, Dale. <laughs> I know. It's so essential. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, oh. it's like an moment. oxymoron. But I would say... One thing that sticks out to me when I meet a nurse is the the problem solver. Problem solver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, yes. getting to the root cause. Yes. Yes, that's what we. And I think you 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 put it that way, but I think that's the same thing that probably sticks out to me, because I can see a nurse, and a nurse will walk into a into a room 
read the room, head for wherever the problem is, deal with it. Um, yep. And you're like, okay, I got gotcha. <laughs> yes. you it. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and just um, that, uh, that assessment thing um, just comes on like, you know, like a second skin and they, they do whatever needs to be done and triaged right there. <laughs> right then and there. You walk yeah. into the room, you already know, you know, yeah. you know, you got to hit this area first. Yeah. You got to go here second. This you got to get third. You know, you yeah. know, because we're taught like you have to bundle and get in yes. mm -hmm. and maximize your time. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of us do that and it becomes our quality, but it also becomes a personality trait. Yes. And yes, we bring it, it home. Mm -hmm. And sometimes home is not where we it's, need to have that approach. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's because right. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Dale. When I took an assessment, you know, you would take all these assessments, right? Like the disc assessment and yes. the, the, yes. all of those. And sometimes that problem solver person comes off to the other person as a know-it-all, right? It, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you behave in that manner with your friends or your loved ones, they yeah. may take it as you being a busybody or a yeah. know-it-all yeah. or you're never wrong, but you're just, you're just driven that way because you know yeah. that you have to get to the assess, right? Thanks. Get yes. to the assessment, make a diagnosis, make it, get an intervention yeah. done. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not yeah. being um, rude yeah. or you're not being crass or you're not or, or judging controlling. anyone. Yes, I know. But what they're looking for is not that. What they're right. looking for is a friend or a mom Ooh. or a wife or a sister yes. or whatever. Uh, and you you brought your nurse mode. <laughs> <laughs> you have the whole white hat on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You oh. brought your nurse mode and that's not what they wanted. <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> What would you say? What would you say though to someone who wants to be a nurse today? Today, I would say, um, I, I don't think there's anything else I would ever want to be. However, um, I would say that really, really hone into who you are, know who you are before you take that leap because, um, you don't want to get into the profession and now it becomes, you become a slave to overtime, money. You, you, you allow other things to drive you, yeah. especially mm -hmm. if you don't know who you are mm -hmm. or where your soul lies mm -hmm. and what your why is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would tell the nurses today that they, they should work with a coach. I'm here, solutional son. Look me up on all yeah. platforms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, work with a coach, work with a mentor, um, somebody that will help you navigate those emotional feelings or help you to problem solve in the work in the workplace. And also to help you know when it's time to leave that area. Because yes. sometimes nurses stay in a specialty and they are so burned out. Yeah. That they yeah. have no more compassion. They mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. have any patience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's time for them to have mm -hmm. personal development or growth. Yes, yes. yes. But they don't, don't identify it. But they don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what I would tell nurses. Yeah. Know who you are. Have a, a clear identity. Have emotion. Get, work with someone that can help you with emotional intelligence. And just really make sure you have self-care. Yes. Yes. And I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be my next question. What does self-care mean to you? Because I don't know if we all know. So what does it mean to you? So I'm going I'm to be 100% transparent. I'm a very transparent person. Um, I, you know, recently in the last two years, I went through a divorce. 
My son joined the military and he lives in the UK. My daughter lived on her own and I ended up having an empty nest and I've been in leadership for 18 years and I just kept, something just kept gnawing at me and I kept saying, I'm not happy. Like I'm not fulfilled. I'm not, I'm not doing what it is that I really want to do. And what I really want to do is mentor nurses and help them flourish, um, right? And women in general. Um, and self-care looks like to me, centering myself to make the decisions that benefit and serve me. I walked away from leadership two months ago. And I went back to operational nursing and I'm mm -hmm. the happiest I've ever been in a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what sometimes we need to acknowledge to ourselves mm -hmm. that, you know, okay. So my, my, my time in this space is, my season is up. <laughs> that is, is up. And the reason I'm uncomfortable is because I don't belong here anymore. <laughs> you know, yes. you need to, um, I, I started, you know, I realized a few years ago that I was um, not really paying uh, attention or not really having boundaries, you know, Ooh. allowing people to cross my boundaries and not even identifying, you know, really what those boundaries were. Yes. To take time and say, wait one minute. Oh, where am I? I'm getting lost in this whole, uh -huh. in this whole thing. And we allow that to happen. You know, um, and if you have no, if you don't um, have very strong boundaries and stick with your boundaries and not be ashamed of your boundaries and don't let anybody mm -hmm. guilt you because of your boundaries, um, then you get lost. Then you get lost. And all that's these... why a lot of nurses, they nurses need to have a mentor. We need to work with coaches. We need we need that support because um like you said, it's unrecognizable sometimes that you don't even have boundaries. Yeah, indeed, 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 indeed. And then you 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 end up in this emotional turmoil. Yeah, yeah. That wreaks havoc on your physical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like sixty pounds overweight, Dale. I was having so much pain in my body. And that was because I was, I was spent. Yeah, yeah. Mentally, yeah. emotionally, physically. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Professionally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. My tank was. I empty. know the feeling. I know the feeling. I know the feeling, because uh, it's so easy. And and you know, uh, not for nothing, sunshine. But there's this. There's, there's another thing that we do. We do to ourselves. We do it to each other. You mentioned the word a while ago, guilt. We tend to Ooh. guilt our each other into, oh, can you come in? It's my, it's your day off. Right. Not that you can't come in on your day off. Not that you can't do an extra shift <laughs> if you want you to. But right. When 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 you ask somebody to do it and they say no, then can we just accept the no? Right. Can we stop trying to tell them about how everybody's short and how this is that and make them feel so guilty that okay, they come in. Right. But they come in and what? They come in and what? Does the work really get properly done? Does the patient really benefit? Uh -huh. Do they have any empathy left? Right. Absolutely. So, I don't know. <sighs> we will get there. We will get there. We will, we will get, get there. there. We will. Mm -hmm. I think we yeah. will. I think... I think... Everything that's happened with the pandemic, uh, we were already stretched to capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a, bur a bubble that needed to burst. Yeah. Yeah. And now, hopefully, we can come back to center and really find our voices. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have to stop. And, 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 I, and I'm going to be frank. We have to... Change comes with um, numbers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We have yeah. to be a collective stance, right? Yeah. We, mm -hmm. you know, we have to understand really what the problem is that we are trying to verbalize. 
like now with the strike, I know that a lot of nurses are verbalizing they want higher pay, they want more job opportunities and things of that nature. And this, they definitely needs, their voices need to be heard, right? Um, but what is causing the, you know, we yes. need to find mm -hmm. out and we need to be, we need to educate mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. when we do make the stance, yeah. We have validity and, and, and data and things to back it and up. Things, yes, 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 yes. I I Because it falls on deaf ears. It does. I, exactly. Exactly as you said. It falls on deaf ears. It falls on deaf ears. I was saying to someone the other day that this whole thing we have to treat, the way we would treat a disease. Mm-hmm. The way we treat the disease because it is because it is you have to do all of the investigations you have to do you know all of the tests and all uh -huh. of the results and compile all of the you have to treat it like a disease if you want to um make any kind it's of progress if you want to heal then you yes. have to treat it like a disease if so. you want to heal absolutely right yeah because it's just a vicious cycle that we go through. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, uh, well, I, I I, just had a thought, but it's kind of gross, so I don't even... <laughs> what? No, no, this is where we talk. No, I was going to say it's kind of gross because you said, you said the, the, it's a bubble that bursts, right? And I was going to say, the, it just had occurred to me, the bubble bursts and there's pus everywhere, you know? Yes, yes, that's absolutely right. And now we have to clean out the wound, yeah. right? And 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 hopefully it'll heal. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it'll heal. But hopefully we need more heal. nurses at the table where these decisions are being made. Yeah, yeah. We do, we do, we do, we do. And you know, with all of the nurses that I see who are um going into different things, they're going into coaching, they're becoming entrepreneurs, they're going into management, mm -hmm. they're going into all kinds of in all kinds of areas. This has to happen. It will happen. It may not be as fast as we like. It may not happen as quickly as we like, right. but it will it will happen because nurses are finally we're taking charge. Yep. We're taking charge. And that that gives me hope. And that's important. That's important, yes, because we need to take charge of of our own it's our own profession. We need to take charge of it. Yes. That. And you yeah. know what I what came to mind, Dale, also is that it's it's almost like an abusive relationship we're in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we 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 lose our voice, number one. <clears throat> and number two, we don't want to speak badly about the abuser, right? We don't. Yeah. Because we've been conditioned. When the doctor calls you and yells at you, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. You take lose it. your voice. You lose your voice. You take it. You take it, right? And you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to call Dr. So-and-so. I'm just going to, you know, I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. But no, yeah. we have to hold those physicians accountable. The organizations need to hold those physicians accountable yeah. for, mal you know, maltreatment. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And we have to insist that we and are they need to them. listen to what the nurses are saying. And, you know, and, and with all due respect, as nurses, we need to understand the fiscal component of it. To yeah. say, okay, you know what? We are wasting here. Why don't we not do this? Yes and do this <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm going to be honest with you. We can be wasteful at times. Yeah. Nurses, mm -hmm. we can be wasteful mm -hmm. with supplies, mm -hmm. with time, with time. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, we always have that yeah. one nurse that's always late, always late. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of talking about her, help her. Yeah. See what mm -hmm. you can do to help her get out on time. Yeah. See what the problem is. As a leader yeah. and as a colleague. Yeah. Yeah. See what the problem is. See what the problem, See what the problem is. And um, find a solution. Find and a find solution. solution. Find a solution and do it. Yeah. Um, 
Sensory, such a lovely conversation I've had. I with know, such an we should do this again, Dale. We will, we will. Let us, by all means. <laughs> yes, I love it. I want to help more nurses. I mean, we have a phenomenon going on right now, Dale, that is turning us against each other um, because we have this whole travel nursing thing with the money mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the nurses that can't travel, that are in the yeah. hospital. Yeah. And yeah. it's pitting yeah. us against each other and yeah. causing animosity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the one yeah. nurse can leave, right? Yeah. Go sign up for the agency and come back and work in the same hospital, in the same place. making mm -hmm. triple the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so we need, we really need to drill down to why is it possible to pay this nurse this much? Right. Um why could what could we not have done to have a loyal employee or mm -hmm. a happier employee, employee in the same place paid well with you know with 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 a good working environment and all of that why did this employee have to leave go to some place else to come back to work in the same place that is the key um, you know yeah so yeah, we need to, to to drill down to those things and and be be committed. Be committed. It's it's one thing. Very often I see people talking about, oh, we need to find out this. We need to do this, but we're not committed to changing it. No. No. You know. So you you went through the motions, but it really was just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. You were not committed to change. Right. Well, that leads to emotional intelligence and fear, and that's what I want to help help nurses with and, um, yeah. you know, anybody with, you know, yes, you want to see the change, but why are you not executing? Executing it. Yeah. 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 There's a reason exactly. behind that. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And it's usually fear of something. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear of change. Exactly. You know? Yeah. 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 Fear that you will get swept away with the tide. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so well, we, have work, to, we have work again. to do we have a lot of work to do we have a lot of work to do <laughs> um and we need to you just we'll just do it one day at a time identify Absolutely. what needs to be done commit to doing it and do it yeah you're ready uh thank you so much thank you dale i'm so honored to be here thank you for having me it is my absolute pleasure and if anyone wants to reach me, they can reach me at Solutional Sun on Instagram and on Facebook. I'm glad you mentioned that. I meant to ask, but I will put it also in the description box yes. of this video. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll pleasure. talk soon, Dale. Yes, we will. Yes, we will.